What's going on everybody? King of Dragons 5000 here, coming at you with another figure review. Today we'll be having a look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness Doctor Strange. And so here we have the Multiverse of Madness Doctor Strange posing out of the packaging. Before we take a look at the figure, let's actually run through his accessories. Doctor Strange does come with several sets of hands. We do get a set of style pose hands. We do get a right hand with his two fingers pointing. We get a left fist hand. Then we do get two hands with the mandalas. We have the right one with a bigger mandala, and then we have the left one with a smaller mandala. And then, of course, he does come with the cloak of levitation. Other than that, Doctor Strange doesn't come with any other accessories. No build a figure piece, which is good. So if you just want Doctor Strange, you can get him just as is. So with that out of the way, guys, let's actually move on to his details. And so here we have a closer look at the Multiverse of Madness, Doctor Strange, and I have to say, it is probably Hazard Bro's best effort at Doctor Strange. I know I said that with the No Way Home Doctor Strange, but this being the newer figure, they did do a lot of things right on this figure, but they also took a couple steps back. Now let's actually focus on his head sculpt really fast. It is completely different from his No Way Home counterpart, which I thought looked a lot like Benedict Cumberbatch, but this one looks more so like him so really good job at updating the face and making it look more like the actor i think i like the hair on this one a little bit more than the other one and you can see the grays in his hair isn't as pronounced but i think the subtlety is a little bit better than it being right up in your face really good job there by hasbro and like i said the face looks so much like benedict cumberbatch and they just keep getting better and better not that this was a bad face for the no way home doctor strange but yeah this one i think looks much much better so moving on to his costume i do have to point out that my probably biggest gripe about this figure is actually the cloak of levitation now on the no way home doctor strange it sat beautifully because there was a peg that you attached to his back and then you draped this over for this version you kind of just rest the coat the cape on his shoulders and you can see it's not the best fit it should be sitting like this and should be closed to about right there but yeah it just rests on his shoulders there's nothing holding it together and yeah it doesn't make for a really appealing look because the the little uh, clips right here are hovering over his body and they're supposed to be like right there so yeah that is a little bit unfortunate that they did not give this a mechanical way to attach it would have looked so much nicer if it would attach right here and be held um, they could have done that with a peg but yeah it unfortunately doesn't peg on and it's a shame because this is a really nice cloak of levitation if my camera will focus on this uh, let's zoom it back a little bit yeah you can see there's a lot of nice detailing on the cloak of levitation let me bring Doctor Strange out here so it has something to focus on it's a really nice cape and they did a very good job detailing it but yeah there's just no way to attach it onto Doctor Strange without it looking goofy and that's a little bit of a shame Ah, uh, if only they had done it this way they did it with the No Way Home Doctor Strange. But anyway, moving on to the rest of his detail, he does have the Eye of Agamotto. Apparently, it is um, put into his costume. He no longer wears it like a necklace. And I do like the fact that he does have the Doctor Strange emblem right here. This is something that he hasn't had in any of the movies, and this does look a little bit more like the comic book Doctor Strange. So really good job there really do like the blues and the red outline i kind of feel like there should be some red panel lining here just to continue on with the red panel lining here because you can see it kind of just stops right there and this this is kind of hasbro's thing right now where they paint the front of the figure but then they get to the back and we don't have any paint and i'm pretty sure this this should be the same light blue that we see right here in the front because if you look at the pattern on it it looks like it should continue on throughout the back but it doesn't and again we have no paint detailing on the back we do have this clip where it, we have it in the front where it's beautifully painted and then we get to the back and it's just mm, hasbro did not care one bit about the back of this figure i do like the fact that the sling ring is painted better than the no way home and is more noticeable really love the new arms on Doctor Strange. You can see the leather wraps look really good on him. Then we do have his style pose hands right here where he's casting spells. I do like that. 
Then we go on to another point that I'm not a fan of. Now on the No Way Home Doctor Strange, he had the same traffic cone syndrome that we got, but you can at least cut some areas to make it look better. This does not allow you any points to cut. Maybe back here, you can cut it to about right there, but yeah, it would go off at a strange angle and it wouldn't function properly. There's just no way to make this function like you would the No Way Home one where we can cut certain areas and it frees up articulation. This, not a chance. There is no way we're going to free up articulation with this. Even if we slid it down the middle right here, it would only provide forward movement like that and there would be no sideways movement. So that is very unfortunate. At least the belt is a separate piece so I do like that. You can see he does have those really dark pants right there which look really nice and we go on to his boots which look like wrapping with, so that's really good. I do like the way this figure came out. I just kind of wish that they didn't take two steps forward and then another step back because this had the potential to be the best Doctor Strange but I feel like they kind of missed the mark in terms of engineering and how things work. It's a beautiful face sculpt don't get me wrong it's a very good likeness to the actor but yeah. Just mechanically this figure isn't as what I would expect, I guess I would be saying. So with that out of the way guys, let's actually get Doctor Strange and compare to other figures you may have in your collection. And so here we have Doctor Strange posed next to a Marvel Legends Cyclops and a DC Multiverse Superman. Here we have Doctor Strange posed next to a WWE Elite Scale figure and a Mezco 112 Collective Popeye the Sailor Man. Here we have Doctor Strange posed next to the Lightning Collection White Ranger in a Star Wars Black Series Mandalorian. And finally here we do have the Multiverse of Madness Doctor Strange posed next to the first Marvel Legend Doctor Strange and the No Way Home Doctor Strange. So with the comparisons out of the way, let's actually have a look at Doctor Strange's articulation. Now Doctor Strange does have better articulation than previous Doctor Strange's, which I do like. He does have a double ball joint here at the neck, which does allow him to look up. He can look down to about right there. Then he does have a second ball joint here at the neck, so that does provide some really good movement. Going forward, back, side to side, it goes all the way around as well as swivel, so really good movement in his head. Unfortunately, we don't get any butterfly joints. I think that would have been really nice on this figure, but his arms do go out to the side all the way horizontal. Now, they would go all the way around, but as you can see, because of the way his tunic is designed, it still kicks his arm out at an angle, which isn't the best way to do a joint end here. It would have been nice if this part was a rubber cover that moved with the arm. That way you could get around that, but yeah, they didn't design it like that. He does have a bicep swivel, which is probably the best we've seen in Doctor Strange. Double bend here at the elbow, swivel and hinge at the wrist, no problems there. We do have an ab crunch on Doctor Strange, which is very good, I'm going to say that. It does go forward and back very nicely. Then we do have a waist swivel underneath the belt, which is surprising. Normally when we get a waist swivel, it's right here at the joint or where the belt is at the top, but this one does swivel underneath the belt and that does work nicely he does kick forward to about right there but again the tunic gets in the way going out to the side non-existent practically no movement so yeah he does have a rotation here at the hip then we do have double bend at the knee going it would go all the way up it would if it wasn't for his tunic. I think the tunic gets in the way for so many things, unfortunately. Then we don't have any boot cut on this Doctor Strange. They did omit that because of how high that joint now goes. But he still has a hinge in the ankle which goes very, very far back. Goes very far forward as well. And then of course we do have forward facing pin for rocker ankle. So overall, really good articulation on Doctor Strange from the waist up and at the ankles from the hips. Um, yeah, they really needed to design this a little bit better. So with that out of the way, guys, let's actually get Doctor Strange posed for my final thoughts and then we'll wrap up this review. And so here we have the Marvel Legends Multiverse of Madness Doctor Strange pose for my final thoughts. And overall, hmm, this is a mixed bag for me. I really wanted to like this figure. I do like it. I don't want anybody to misconstrue my words and think that I don't like this figure. I just feel like Hasbro made some very questionable decisions with this figure. 
I like the fact that on the No Way Home Doctor Strange we had a way to peg in the cape of levitation, which on this one I don't like the way it sits on his shoulders. It does make posing him rather difficult. As you can see, I do have him in a decent pose right now, but trying to get his arms higher than they are right now does push the cape off his body more than it already is, and there's just really no way to pose him in a good pose with the jacket or with his cape on, and that's one of the selling points of this figure is that it has probably the best cloak of levitation that we've seen out of Hasbro and it's just a shame that they did not make this the way they should have. I think a peg in the back would have been really nice. Another thing I'm not a fan of is the traffic cone at his legs. I kind of wish that there were slits that would allow some better articulation but unfortunately they don't have the slits and there's no way to cut it up there to make it look nice like we did on the No Way Home Doctor Strange. This one although I do like aspects of it I also don't like certain aspects about it so like I said it is a mixed bag for me I personally still like the figure I just feel like they could have done several things different with this figure I absolutely love the fact that his hands come in different styles so you don't have to just have him with grip hands or the standard spell casting hands he gets his own unique hands now I especially love the head sculpt on this figure it is the best likeness to the actor that we have ever seen out of Hasbro and Dare I say it, it's better than most figure arts figures nowadays. So yeah, this is a pretty good looking Doctor Strange figure if you have him in a neutral pose. Otherwise, messing around with him, it's not as fun as you would think. I do like some parts of his articulation, but other parts could be much better. If you're a fan of this Doctor Strange, you're definitely going to want to have him in your collection. And the good thing about him is that he doesn't come with a Build-A-Figure piece, so you don't have to track him down if you want to complete Rentar, which I think that's a really smart move. Have the key character not include a Build-A-Figure piece, so they're not essential to it. Overall, I still like it, but for $24 at this point, I don't think this Doctor Strange hits all the right marks. I would have liked to see a few more things done with this figure differently than I would say that the $24 is worth it. But in my honest opinion, $24 for a Marvel Legend is outrageous. And especially when they make mistakes like this, I don't see the value in it. If this was $22, I would be on the fence and saying, yeah, if it was $19, absolutely worth it. But at $24, mm, you're really going to have to ask yourself, if you can live with all the faults on this figure. So with that being said guys, I'm King of Dragons 5000. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and check out all my other action figure reviews as well as all my other Marvel Legend videos. Hopefully you find them informative. As always, if there's a figure you would like to see me review, let me know down in the comments and if it fits in my collection, I'll gladly have a look at it. While you're at it, check out my Instagram account for new and exciting action figure photos. And as always, Ring that bell to be notified every time I upload a video. Until next time guys, I'll see you later. Take care everyone.